Commission for taking a look at how we would potentially combine the two municipalities, how we would um, look at sharing uh, police and public works, um, and it was critical um, to, to get the process started, but also do so from an objective standpoint. The next thing that, that, that um, we looked at in the next stage was what is known as the options report. And the options report was important because it gave us a series of options for each department. So if we wanted to basically um, save X amount of dollars, this is what our department would look like. If we wanted to have this level of service delivery, this is um, what our department would look like. And for each particular category, we had anywhere from one to four different options as, as far as how we could potentially um, construct that overall um, department in a new municipality or as a shared service when it came to police or public works. And that was important because that gave us um, an opportunity to discuss and balance cost savings with service delivery. And in every single case, you know, we didn't just you know, dive into you know, cost savings and that was the sole consideration. It was also you know, how can we enhance service delivery? How can we make it more effective and more efficient? Um, and that options report gave us you know, various different scenarios and we combed through that as a commission. And that ultimately led to our recommendations report. And the recommendations were made by the commission. So we got the options from our consultant, went through them, debated them, and then came up with it with the recommendations report um, in May of that year. Also through this process, we came up with what our cost would be to transition if we consolidated or if we um, did a shared service, and we reported that to the state. And as probably many of you have read, the state has uh, recently come through and provided their um, promised 20% uh, of our uh, transition-related expenses. Um, and then we had a final report that came out in June, presented that to the governing bodies um, and to the public, and ultimately the vote occurred in November and it passed in both municipalities. But along the way, and even getting started, there's always this great intangible that I'm sure all of you face in your communities and that's fear. And fear stops all of these studies before they begin because it's very easy um, to stick to what we're doing and, and hide in, in the, the shroud of home rule. Um, but there are ways to address fear, and we had to do that as a community. Um, and I just wanted to share some, some, um, <laughs> some interesting um, advertisements and discussions about some of the um, emotions that take place when you look at consolidation or shared services. So um, fear is an obstacle. And you know, what I wanted to share is I went back to the library and I pulled out some of the older um, consolidation um, campaigns and you know one of the things that you have to be aware of is that there's always going to be people opposed to whatever you do but when it comes to consolidation of shared services there's going to be a contingent that that is always going to be out there um, and regardless of what your commission does to try to mitigate um, it, they're, they're going to be a force and that's important to be able to address the concerns that are raised address them professionally um, and be able to counterbalance them um, in any way possible. But if you take a look at this one, this one says Big Brother always has his reasons and Big Brother is never satisfied. Don't let Big Brother get any bigger. Vote no on consolidation. This is from 1996. Um, if you take a look at this one, this one actually really kind of raised my eyebrows. <laughs> Um, this one is from 1996 as well, um, and it, I, you know, it's, it's small, but just so you know, that is Hitler on there, and uh, there's Saddam Hussein, and Napoleon is on there as well, um, and it says, throughout history, ambitious public officials have always favored consolidation. So if you're still <laughs> wondering which way to vote, just ask any Czechs, Poles, Lithuanians, Koreans, or Kuwaitis whom you happen to know what consolidation has done for them. Um, and this is a real ad, and this was out there in 1996. So this, and this was Princeton. So I mean, this, this happens. <laughs> this happens. And you know, this is something that as a, as a community, you know, you have to be prepared to address, both as an elected official and as, and, um, as, a, as a commission member, if it's something that you're considering starting. Um, but, but I was truly shocked by this one. Um, but in 2011, it was back again. You know, we had this again. I mean, this, this ad, you know, that you see here, this was a, 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 a literature drop that basically every single residence in the community 
receive this on their doorstep in the morning. I, I like to refer to, that, uh, to it as the serial killer font. <laughs> um, and it's, it, but, and these are, but these are emotions. These are emotions at their core. And it's something that cannot be dismissed. They can't be dismissed because they are going to be out there. And they are going to be um, calling into question everything that your commission does, whether it's looking at a shared service or a, a full municipal consolidation. And you have to be able to address it. You have to take it seriously. Um, and we did. We did take it seriously. I mean, now we can look back and, you know, and, and, you know laugh at it. But at the time, you know, it, it's very serious. And so how did we overcome that? Well, as I mentioned before, we established a clear and transparent process from the beginning. We felt that if we had any chance at this, we had to build a public trust and do everything that we could to make sure that all the information was out there in the community and that we were proactive in reaching out to the community, not only at the beginning, not only at these various different report stages, because no one's going to, in the community, is going to read a, a three-inch baseline report. Um, we had to be able to, to bring it to the community and talk about what their concerns were and try to find ways that we could potentially mitigate those. The other thing um, that we also relied on heavily was the fact that we had a consultant that you know, wasn't tied to either community um, and was able to present things objectively and at times help allow us to refocus back on the issues at hand and take some of those emotions out of the process. And that was very, very important. But we also did something else. Once, this, um, once the Consolidation Commission um, recommended consolidation and it was on the ballot, there was a group that was formed called Unite Princeton. And this uh, group was a, basically an issue-driven um, uh, issue campaign uh, group that basically was out there to identify voters, help get out the vote, um, help counterbalance uh, what was happening with some of the anti-consolidation uh, folk in terms of their literature and advertisements. Um, and it was critical, I think, to getting us to that ultimate um, successful vote. So, you know, we call it, you know, I call it now the Princeton model, but it's a model that's adaptable really anywhere. Because what we did, obviously we had a history and we, we studied consolidation off and on for, you know, five decades essentially. But the process that we went through this time was markedly different from all the process, processes that we went through in the past. Um, and I truly think this is something that is applicable to many communities that are facing a lot of these, these various different fiscal challenges. Um, and it applies to not only consolidation, but to shared services, to municipal efficiency. Um, but it all starts out by knowing your community and understanding how you could go about a study process that could ultimately become successful. You know, what happened in the past? What are some of the concerns that you know already exist in your community? Um, and how could you go about addressing that? And it's important that, you know, when we look at consolidation, that it's truly a merger of equals. It's not one community taking over the other, and it's really building a new community that has, you know, a, a, a shared history, perhaps, but truly a new identity. And, and that's something that is really important. Um, the process that you have has to obviously be clear and transparent. Reaching out to the public proactively is critical, as I mentioned, um, and have a, a a factual issue-driven campaign, you know, that's something that, as I mentioned, it was really critical to this process because there will be fear, there will be emotions, and it's going to take courage to get started. But if you're open-minded about it and your community um, is open-minded, I, I think that it's, it's certainly possible. Um, and we were able to prove that. And we have a great panel up here that was instrumental in, in helping us get through this process. Um, and if you notice when Gina introduced me before, everything was former. You know, former mayor, former commission member, former transition task force member, nothing was current. And it wasn't current because the last two years were so intensive. You know, these, these guys are still here. You know, and these are the real heroes that still made it through. Right? Um, well, we have um, some great panel members up here this morning, and I'll start on my left. We have um, 
Former uh, Borough Councilwoman Heather Howard and now current Princeton Councilwoman um, Heather Howard. Uh, we have the current mayor, um, Liz Lampert. And we have the administrator of the new municipality, Bob Brushai. He used to be administrator of Princeton Borough. And we have the president and CEO of CGR, uh, the Center for Government Research that um, was the consultant on the effort. And so I'm going to start on my right, but you know, this allows us to take a little bit of a deeper dive into the discussion that I had as just kind of an, uh, an overview. Um, but I, I want to ask Joe to kind of focus a little bit on that study process that I covered, because the study process in, is important, but the way that's, that CGR went about it, I think, was instrumental in, in helping us get to that overall recommendation. Um, starting with the baseline report, moving on through the options, which presented a series of lenses, and then also getting us to that final uh, recommendation. So, John, I don't know if you want to touch on that to kind of begin, but I think that's kind of the critical starting point. Thank you. Um, I know many of you are, uh, are familiar with, with CGR, or at least have, have heard of our organization. Before I walk you through the process, let me give you a, a thumbnail sketch. Uh, we are in our 98th year. Uh, we are based in Rochester, New York. We are a uh, 501c3, we're a nonprofit organization um, that is basically evolved into a management consulting organization that serves school districts and local governments. And I think the interesting thing about the, 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 the model in Princeton is that it has, it really was informed by uh, uh, the work that we've done around the shared services consolidation and government management issue, um, both in other communities in New Jersey, uh, across the state of New York, in Ohio and Massachusetts. I remember one of my first trips to New Jersey, I said, you know, the questions that are being asked here about the sustainability of local government and how to do things more efficiently and how to save, uh, uh, save money and reduce the tax burden are the same exact questions uh, that are being asked in pretty much every other uh, state, at least in the Northeast and the Midwest, where we have a lot of local government. So um, you're in good company. You know, we tend to think of ourselves as, as facing unique challenges. These are, these are the same questions that are being asked, and that's why I think that the model that was used in Princeton can be so informative for, uh, for other communities, not just in New Jersey, but, um, but elsewhere in the country. Um, before I talk about, uh, briefly about the process, and I'll just add a couple of points uh, and do it briefly, um, to, uh, to Chad's comments, let me set the stage by, um, by explaining uh, how CGR approaches our role in these studies, whether it's in Princeton or in other communities. A couple of key points. First of all, we see our role as that of an informant. I think I told the, the commission in Princeton this at the very first meeting. Um, our role is not to make a, a recommendation that you should or you shouldn't, that you should share services or keep the status quo, that you should merge or stay separate. Our role is to inform the decision that the community ultimately will make. And as Chad points out, and I think uh, rightfully so, um, the shared service or consolidation discussion is one that is, you know, notwithstanding however much uh, quantitative analysis you do of the dollars and cents, at the end of the day, emotional issues are very, uh, are very powerful variables in this decision-making process. So if we've done our job the right way, when the community through its elected officials, its residents, its businesses, and other stakeholders ultimately makes a decision to go one way or another, uh, that that decision point is as informed as it can possibly be. Uh, the second point I make is that our role, and, and Chad alludes to this, is to really lead a process, to drive a process of analyzing objective data. Uh, again, in the interest of positioning the community to make a decision. I don't think as you approach the consolidation or shared service discussion that you can uh, uh, possibly squeeze out all of those emotional variables. What we try to do is quantify the quantifiable, analyze the analyzable, and again, place that information in front of voters, in front of uh, commission members, in front of elected officials and other stakeholders so that they can make an informed decision. So uh, again, we, we don't see it uh, ever as our decision at CGR to make. Um, it's the community's decision, the taxpayers, the people that call it home, the people that work in the community, and so on. 
So that framework really leads to, uh, from my perspective, two principles that govern all of our work uh, on uh, consolidation and shared services. Uh, and these were two points that we made to Princeton from the very first meeting. The first is that we don't come in with any preconceived notion that consolidation does or doesn't make sense for a community. Um, that allows us to, I think, very effectively play the role as this objective outside arbiter, um, analyzer of fact, uh, uh, marshaller of data, if you will. Uh, and that's the role that we, uh, we certainly try to play in Princeton. So we don't come into any of these studies with a preconceived notion. Um, secondly, the second principle I point out is that this needs to be a two-way process. Chad talks about the importance of community outreach uh, to, the, uh, to the Princeton study process. Uh, what we did in Princeton, what we do in any other community where we uh, analyze this issue, is to set up a process whereby the community can be informed and, in turn, inform the study process. So as Chad points out, we held, uh, former, uh, first of all, all of the commission meetings are public. Um, public comment was, uh, was invited during those meetings. Um, secondly, we had a set series of uh, formal commission public forums at critical points in the process. I remember the very first meeting was, uh, I think, our first visit to Princeton um, before uh, we had started uh, even collecting data on the baseline report. I got up in front of that first meeting, and my colleague Scott Sitted, who's in the audience, was, was on stage as well. And one of the first points we made was, we've not opened your budget. We've not sat down and interviewed any elected officials or department heads. We have not started this study. We want to hear from you. We want to talk to you about what our process is going to be for the study. We want to let you know what the timetable is going to be for this study. And we want to let you know all the mechanisms that are available to you to communicate with us as study consultant, with, uh, with the commission, with, uh, um, with the entire process, so that we try to establish from the very outset uh, a, a two-way line of communication. And I think that really reinforced uh, the transparency of the process. Uh, and that was, um, that was something that was vitally important to the commission and something that, um, that persisted for the entire process. So again, a way to, to try to breed trust in the process uh, and, to, uh, and to validate this transparency principle. So with those two key principles that kind of govern our approach to these studies, how do we operationalize uh, the, uh, uh, this framework and these principles in terms of the actual study process? Chad talks about um, uh, these, um, the, the major components of our study, and I just want to touch on, on each of, of the, the, the kind of three key components in a little more detail. The first one, as Chad mentioned, was our baseline phase. We typically approach any project like this at CGR in kind of a two-phase, with a two-phase perspective. The first is baseline, the second is options. Um, in terms of the baseline, what we really need to do from the very beginning is establish a shared uh, knowledge base, a foundation from which we can begin to develop and analyze options. Uh, this is critically important in a number, in a number of respects. First of all, uh, for many communities, and I would say this was the case for Princeton, uh, that baseline report is, is really the first opportunity to see the two communities, the two local governments, in the same context. If you look at that baseline report, and I think it was about 182 pages, um, not that I was counting, um, that baseline report, all of the tables line up you know, there's, there's a staffing table by function. Here's how many in the borough. Here's how many, how many in the township. Uh, there's, there's an expenditure comparison. Here's what's spent in the township. Here's what's spent in the borough. Um, debt comparisons. Um, uh, review of, of, uh, of ordinances, codes and ordinances, in the same way. So this is an opportunity for those in the township to see themselves in the borough context, and those in the borough to see themselves in the township context. What that does, of course, is build in at the very first maybe three or four months of the study process uh, uh, really no examination of options, no analysis of fiscal impact. This is all collecting baseline data because we know emotions are going to play on the process and we need to establish a common point of departure and we can only do that 
with objective budget and operational data. Um, so if you haven't had a chance to